Hey everybody, Matt Kloskowski here, and uh, we're gonna take a look at a feature here in Photoshop called Color Lookup Tables. Um, it's something that's been, it's been around for a while, years actually. It hasn't gotten a lot of, a lot of play out there. I see it a little bit more and more lately, but uh, I wanna show you what they are. I wanna show you how, how they can really kind of help your creativity, if you will. They're almost like presets. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about when I use them because I think that's really important because there's a lot of different stylistic choices we can make out there. And, uh, and I think it's important to know when we use them. And then I'm gonna give you a download because uh, there's a way that makes using them a little bit easier. So you can check the description for a link for that. Okay, let's go ahead and dive in. So uh, a color lookup table, here's, here's the deal. We've got a photo open. We're going to go over, make sure you have your adjustments panel open here. You can just go to window adjustments. You should see it over here on the right hand side and uh, and go over, open up your adjustment. If you look at the one, it's got a uh, looks like a little closed in tic tac toe type of a box of sorts. It's a little grid. If you go click on that, you're going to see a little uh, panel that flies open here and, and you'll see something called 3D LUT. All right. So let's just talk about what that is. Uh, forget about 3D for now. Uh, LUT, look up table, color lookup table. That's what a LUT is. The 3D has nothing to do with three dimensional space. It has to do basically a lookup table. It's, it's kind of like taking, it's kind of like saying, here's an easy way to think about it. You're telling Photoshop, take this one color and make it look like this color. That's what a lookup table is. You're, you're mapping one color to another color. The 3D just means the RGB color space. It's looking at it in a three dimensional type of a way, but again, it has nothing to do with, with converting your image over to 3D. So don't worry about that. Um, so that's essentially what a lookup table is. It's converting. You're saying, take this one color and map it to another color. There are abstract and device link sections below. We're not really going to talk most uh, more about those. You can you can kind of click on them and poke around if you want to. But the good stuff is really in this 3D LUT section. So what you'll do is uh, is go ahead and open up that section. You're going to see some ones at the top here that you won't have. These are just some presets I'm working on. Uh, yours should start with the two strip one. All right. So click on two strip or three strip or you can click on any one of these. So let's say I go click on edgy amber as an example. So we'll click on that pretty strong, right? Well, they are a layer. It's an adjustment layer. So it shows up in your layers panel here and you can always go down and reduce the opacity um, of that adjustment layer. So you can change the opacity of it. Uh, you can turn it off. You can turn it on. You can change the blend modes. Go back in here and let's take a look. Let's go maybe late sunset. All right, actually, that's not going to look good. I can already tell you because it's really meant for a sunset photo, which this is not. Uh, let's take a look through here. Um, soft warming. That's a nice one too. So if you look, that's the before, that's an after. In fact, if, if you have your properties panel open, which is where you're working with your color lookup tables, you can click on that little eyeball icon and that shows you the before and after. So that makes it really easy too. So you can kind of bounce through these different things here. Um, you know, the Kodak ones are cool. Uh, click on through the, the different Kodak ones. It kind of just gives you a different look. This is an interesting one because if you look at that, the difference here, that's before and that's after. You can see it's actually muted it a little bit. It's, it's flatter. And what it's done is it's taken the blacks to where they're not so black anymore. There's a, it's not as quite as contrasty. And that's a very popular look that's out there. So I'm not going to bounce through all of them just yet. Let's take a look on a portrait here. So here's a portrait example. I've already got one added. Double click on it, opens up that same thing. You can see it's one of the Fuji ones. If you want to see the before and after, that's before, that's after. Pretty cool. Uh, we can go through here. Let's try, uh, let's, what's a good one to try? Maybe, uh, maybe no, yeah. soft warming is another cool one. Oh, apparently it's black. Every once in a while that happens, um, you'll see like if you click on or off of it, it'll just change. I haven't quite figured that one out yet. I'll click through here. Some of these Fuji ones are pretty cool looking. Again, they'll give you different looks for your photos. Uh, some of the Kodak ones. And then what'll happen is you'll apply you'll apply something to your photo. You'll apply some type of a look to it. And it's going to look, it might look too much in one direction. Well, don't forget, you get a layer mask over here. So if it's kind of hitting the skin too much, if it makes the skin too warm, uh, just go press B for your brush. 
set your foreground color to black, and then I'll always change the opacity a little bit up here just to reduce the opacity. And then you can go in here and you can brush it away from the areas of the photo that you don't want it to. Because after all, it is an adjustment layer. It works like any other layer inside of Photoshop. So why do I use these things? Um, and I think that's an important topic. It's, it's a question I get whenever I show them. So here's the idea. There's a couple of different ways. I think Lightroom presets, you know, why would you use them over Lightroom presets? It, it's, it's very much in a, in a way a similar thing. You know, you're giving yourself a stylistic look. The way that I think about it is you're going to, you're going to apply the exposure and the tone to your photos, and then you're going to add style. Maybe you've got a group of photos. You want them all to have the same feel to them. So I use Lightroom presets a lot for that. Uh, sometimes with the Lightroom preset, it'll affect the exposure and the highlights and the shadows and the overall tone of the photo too much based on that preset. Yes, there's ways to change that, but most of your color lookup tables really just give you more of a, a stylistic change to your photo rather than really messing with the overall exposure. Um, not to say all of them do that. Some of them whack it out pretty crazy, but what most of them do. Um, another thing that I'll, I'll say is, you know, where am I? You know, if I'm in Photoshop, then that's just a nice, easy place to go apply a stylistic change to the photo. And I think there's some effects inside of Photoshop you can't get in Lightroom. And then the last thing, I think it's just as important as all the rest is mood. I think most of you watching this, you, you're doing this because you love photography, not because you're being paid a ton of money to do it. And, and so a lot of this editing and a lot of your photography processes is, is because you really like it. And sometimes your mood is different. Sometimes where you feel like working one day may be different than where you feel like working another day. Um, you know, one of the best examples I can give you, know, if you look at behind me, there's two electric guitars hanging on the wall. One is an Ibanez, one is an ESP. They both do basically the same thing. So why would I pick one up over the other one? It's mood, you know? Sometimes it's just mood, especially when I connect it to an amplifier, they're pretty much gonna sound pretty darn close to each other, but it happens to be the mood that we're in. So that's something to consider too. All right, uh, take a look here. So in the description, you can download a PSD file. Here's the thing, let's say, and a nice way to say this is your color lookup tables in some way leave some usability enhancements that could uh, could happen here because especially on the Mac, like I've got a click on each one. Oh, by the way, I had to show this one to you. This was really cool. I'm gonna go back to this photo. Um, look at this, look at this version. It's crazy, but it's pretty darn cool. Anyway, besides the point. There's a little bit of a usability uh, to, to be desired here to click on all these. I think there's a way on the Windows machines to, to do it with your arrow key. I get mixed reports on that one. Um, but on the Mac, I haven't been able to find a way other than going in there and clicking on each one. So here's what I did. I created this, uh, this PSD file. And what you can do is you can drop your, drag your own photos in here. So you would just go to a photo, uh, select all, copy, uh, then bounce over to the other document, paste it in. You'd probably have to go into free transform um, inside of here. You just go to edit free transform and, uh, and you can go resize the photo to fit inside of here. But what this document will do for you is it'll let you go through all of the ones that we have here inside of that, uh, inside of that color lookup table. So you're going to open up window. You're going to go down here to layer comps. And what I did is I created a layer comp for each one. You don't really have to worry about that. You don't have to make anything. The only thing to know is go to window, open up your layer comps panel, and then just click on one, just click on the top one. So that'll give you an idea and you can click down through all of them. But the easy thing to do is just go to the very, very bottom of the panel and you'll see that there's a little arrow and all you got to do is just press that arrow and you can cycle through all of them inside of there, all right? It'll even give you the name of it and you can just cycle through and when you catch one that you really like, you can just stop. If you wanna see which one it is, you can see the name right there and you can also open up that little folder and you can see that it'll be turned on inside of your layers panel over there. So super easy way to just kind of cycle through all of them and, uh, and kind of figure out which one you like. Cause I think it is, I think it's gonna be a, a trial and error process where you know, you're not going to know what all of them look like right off the bat. And sometimes it's going to be hard to remember. So that'll help you out. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I will talk to you very soon.